Hey everyone, it's Amita from Proficient's Amazon Connect team. And in this video, I will walk you through what AWS and Amazon Connect are, discuss some of the benefits, and show you how to build out a basic inbound contact center. Okay, so to get started, let's talk about Amazon Web Services. What is it? So it's a platform that offers easy to use cloud computing solutions that are affordable, reliable, and scalable. Developed by Amazon, there are now over 165 services, ranging from databases to machine learning tools. So one of these services is Amazon Connect, and it allows anyone to set up a self-service cloud-based contact center in minutes. So what are some of the benefits of this? Why would you want to move from a traditional on-prem contact center to something that's cloud-based? Well, to start off with, it's affordable. There's no equipment to purchase or maintain, and they have a pay-as-you-go pricing model. So there's no monthly or licensing fee to worry about. It's also easy to use and integrate with other applications. So you can have a contact center up and running in a matter of minutes, and we're going to walk through that today. And it also integrates with other AWS services or third-party software platforms. It's scalable. So with a few clicks of a button, you can add or remove agents and administrators in your contact center. It's also reliable. Amazon Connect is part of Amazon's own infrastructure, and it operates globally in over 20 geographic regions, meaning you're not relying on a single data center. And finally, it's AI ready. So using Amazon Lex, Poly, or Transcribe, it's possible to implement artificial intelligence into your contact center to offer a better customer experience. So getting started with Connect, there are a couple of preliminary steps you'll need to do before we set up your first inbound contact center. These are signing up for your AWS account, provisioning an instance, so just to tell you what an instance is. Uh, it's an independent environment for your contact center that contains all the necessary settings and functionality required to run. So this would include your user directory, things like data encryption, as well as your storage and integration settings. So when you create an Amazon Connect instance, you're essentially creating an entire contact center stack. So the third thing you're going to have to do is actually set up Amazon Connect. Because this information is sensitive and deals with accounts, I'm not going to actually record these three steps, but I have linked to all of the official documentation from AWS and the description to this video below. So you can follow along with all of those and then you'll be set up and ready to go. So once you've got everything set up, you're going to log into your AWS management console. You're going to select Amazon Connect. You're going to choose the instance that you want to log into, which I've already pre-chosen here. And then I'm going to go ahead and log in as an administrator. Perfect. So now I'm on the Amazon Connect dashboard. You'll see that there are a couple of different options on the left-hand side. So we've got metrics and quality. We've got routing. We've got user management. But what I'm going to do first is go ahead and provision a phone number. So it is possible to port your own number over from an existing contact center. You can also do call forwarding, but for testing purposes, we recommend just using a toll-free one that you can create in a matter of seconds. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to hover over this routing icon. I'm going to click on phone numbers. And I already have one here, but let's go ahead and click claim a number. The toll-free option is selected by default, and then you can select the country that you're calling from. I'm going to choose Canada. And then it goes ahead and it just gives you a list of numbers you can use. They're all toll-free. You can select any one. Let's just choose the first one. We're going to scroll down. You can enter a description if you want to, but it's not mandatory. I'm going to say my test number. And I'm going to leave this contact flow IVR field blank for now. Then I'll just click Save. And you can see I've got my number here ready to go. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually build out our contact center. And we're going to do that in something called a contact flow. So you can see I'm back on my dashboard. I'm going to hover over this routing icon. And I'm going to select contact flows. All right, now what I want to do is create a new one. So when I click Create Contact Flow, by default, this is going to make an inbound contact center. There are other ones that you can create by clicking on this menu. But for today, we're just going to choose Create Contact Flow. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a name. Uh, let's go with October 2019 
test flow. And then I'm going to go ahead and just save that so I've got it ready. Okay, so what is a contact flow? It's essentially an editable roadmap that directs the customer from the time they enter the system until they're connected with an agent. Now I've opened another contact flow in a different window here. And what you'll see is that it resembles a flow chart and it's basically a series of steps that you design for the customer as they move through their call. So I created all of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. Contact flows are created in this contact flow designer using action blocks, which you arrange by dragging and dropping onto a canvas. So action blocks are put in one of these groups that you'll see on the left-hand side. So if I click on interact, I see all these different blocks that I want. I can drag one over, I can drag this over, I can drag that over. I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this so you guys can see a little bit more. And you can edit each of these blocks by just clicking on the title and then it kind of pops out and you sort of can make your changes here but I am just going to remove all of these because we're gonna actually build one from scratch, but I just wanted to show you how that worked. Um, now, as you can see, there are a lot of different blocks here and we are not gonna go into detail explaining what all of them do, but I've also linked to the official AWS documentation below that explains what each of the blocks do. So feel free to go through that to familiarize yourself with all of the different functions. All right, so all inbound contact flows are made with an entry point block, which you can see right here and nothing else. So you'll see that actually, I'm going to go ahead and say this again. They don't have auto save. That's just something to remember. But then if I try to publish this, which essentially means setting it live, I'm going to get an error. So you'll notice that it's giving me an exclamation mark. It's an angry red. And that's because this little circle here is not actually connected to anything else. So anytime you make a contact flow, you'll notice that there are a bunch of little circles, but they all have to be connected to something. Like there can't be anything left open. Otherwise you're not allowed to sort of publish it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building this out. So the first thing I want to do is let's think about what we want the customer to experience when they're calling in. So we're going to build out a basic contact center that uh, when a customer phones in, they are going to have the option to choose to be put to the basic information line or to the returns line. So the first thing that I want to happen is I want the customer to be greeted and we can do that by using a play prompt block. So I'm going to drag that over. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. What I'm going to do first is edit it. So I'm going to click on that and then I can edit it here. Now the way these play prompt blocks work is I'm going to select the text to speech option and anything I put into this window is just going to be spoken back. So for the customer, they might think they're listening to a real person. It does sound pretty human. You'll hear it. Um, so anything I put in here is just going to be read back as speech. So let's go ahead and put in a greeting. Let's go with hello. Welcome to Acme Incorporated. Okay, and you'll see here that there's a little line that says interpret as, and you can say text or SSML. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to stick with text. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just delete this link, and then I'm going to re draw it myself, and I'm going to connect it to this play prompt box. So what you will see as we build this out is there'll be a series of blocks. They're all going to be connected and each one sort of will like, it's a progression. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm not going to publish it, publish it yet because as you probably noticed, this little circle is left open. Perfect. So when somebody calls in, they are going to hear, hello, welcome to Acme Incorporated. Now what's the next action that I want a customer to do? Well, they're phoning this number because they want to reach somebody in the basic information line or the returns line. So we need to give them the option to do that. And in order to do that, we're going to use a get customer input block. So I'm going to drag that over, click it to edit it. And what I'm going to do first, oops, I just scrolled up, is again, use text to speech. So what I want to say is, hey, if you want to speak to somebody in basic info, press one. If you want to speak to someone in returns, press two. So in the same way that we edited the play prompt block, we can enter that information to speak with someone in basic information, please press one to speak with someone in 
returns, please press two. Perfect. So we set that as it is. And then what we need to do next is scroll down. We actually have to give them the option to press one or press two. And the way we do that is we add conditions. So we're going to click add another condition. So what's the option? Well, the first option is one. That's what they would press on their keypad. And the second option is two. So let's say I had five options. I would just keep adding conditions until I hit five. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And you can see now I have the option to press one or the option to press two. I'm just going to drag this over a little bit. I'm going to connect these two blocks. I'm going to talk about timeout, default, and error in a minute, but let's just keep going through our flow. So what happens next? Okay, well, if they press one, we want them to go to the basic information line. If they press two, we want them to go to the returns line. How do we do that? We've got to set the queue. In order to do that, we're going to go into the set group of blocks. I'm going to drag a set working queue block over here. But because there are two different queues they could go into, I'm actually going to drag another one over. So the first one, I'm going to edit again by clicking on it. It gives you the option to select the queue. And I'm just going to use, use basic queue, which is already there. I'm going to hit save. So now you can see, you can see that the queue uh, says basic queue, and it should be transferred to that. And then over here, I have the returns option. So I've got to set that as well. I'm going to click that. And actually, I don't have a returns one. So what I'm going to do is add that option. So I'll cancel this. I'm going to go back to routing. I'm going to go to queues. I'm going to open it in a new window. And I'm going to click on add new queue. So I'm just going to call it returns. This is my returns queue. You don't have to fill in the description if you don't want to. What you need to do is fill in the hours of operation. I'm just going to choose basic hours. You can set those and we'll be going through that in a different tutorial. But for now, I'll leave everything else blank and I'm just going to hit add new queue. So now I can see that I have a returns queue. And if I go back into my Amazon Connect contact flow editing, if I click on set working queue and select a queue, oh, there it is, returns. Perfect. So I selected that. Go ahead and click save. So how do we connect these? Well, if I press one, I want to go to the basic queue. So we're going to do that. And if I press two, I want to go to this one. Great. So the next thing you have to do is actually transfer the person to the live agent in each respective queue. In order to do that, we're going to choose a transfer to queue block. Again, I'm going to need two because we've got two different queues. So if I have success with this, it's going to transfer. And the same thing with the returns queue. That's going to transfer. OK, great. So this functionality should work. But what about these errors and these like you know circles that are left open? What do we have to do there? Well, the answer is, is it depends. It depends on really what you want your customer to do and what you want them to hear. So if I wanted to provide a really good customer experience, let's say they reached an error when it was getting customer input. What I could do is drag a play prompt box in. And I could actually tell them that. So I could connect this and I could say, hey, there was an error getting your input. Please try calling again. I'll go ahead and I'll save that. So if there is an error with this at all, the person on the, on the line calling in is going to hear, hey, there was an error getting the input. Please try calling again. So they're going to do that. The other thing you could do is you could try and connect these just to a termination box. So for the purposes of time, we're just going to do that. But you can see how easy it is to customize the caller experience. Like I can add in play prompt boxes for all of these. And I can say, oh, there was an error transferring you to the basic information queue. So please try calling again. But what I will do is choose my uh, disconnect hangup box. So what this does, this is the end point. So as you can see, there's no circle here like there is with all of these. This is done. The phone call is done. The contact flow is finished. Uh, if somebody wants to speak to an agent or move through this again, they're going to have to call in again. So what I'm going to do here is actually just connect all of these open circles to this block. 
again, you can add in your own play prompts here explaining exactly what happens. And actually for testing purposes, I do recommend doing that because sometimes you'll have such a complex contact flow that you won't actually know where it broke. So if you want to know exactly what's not working, you can add in a play prompt box. And anytime there's an error, it's gonna tell you like, oh, this box had an error or this box had an error. And it just, it just makes it easier to sort of troubleshoot while you're building things out. Okay, let me just zoom out of that so you guys can sort of see what this looks like. So this is my contact flow build out. This is a basic contact center ready to go, guys. Um, so let's go ahead and save all that. Hopefully I won't get any red exclamation marks. Perfect. And what I'm going to do now is publish it. So it's ready to go live. Oh, see? I didn't close this one, so I am going to just connect that to my disconnect box. We'll do this again, publish it. So we've published our October 2019 test flow. It's live, it's ready to go. But how does somebody actually reach this particular flow when they call the number? Well, in order to do that, we're gonna have to attach this contact flow to the phone number. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click into the number that I got. I'm going to select uh, the contact flow drop down menu and I'm going to go and find the October 2019 test flow. Choose it. I'm going to hit save. And so now you can see that the contact flow that this number is linked to is actually the one that we just built out. Now it does take about a minute for this actually to work. So if I were to call this number right now, it probably wouldn't result in anything. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of time to actually work. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I am going to sign in as an agent. So you can actually, when you're logged into Amazon Connect as an agent, you can log in like there is a custom contact control panel for you um, and you can be here receiving calls so I'm going to set my status to available so what should happen when I call in to this flow is I should be hearing uh, a call coming in if everything works correctly I've got the phone number I've got my contact control panel I'm logged in everything's set what I'm gonna do is copy and paste the number i'm going to dial in so you guys should be able to hear exactly what happens hello welcome to acme incorporated to speak with someone in basic information please press one to speak with someone in returns please press two okay so i'm going to go ahead and press one thank you for calling your call is very important and to us that. and will be answered in the order it was received. I'm just going to dim the volume there, but you can see as the agent logged in, I'm getting the phone call and I can go ahead and accept it. So I just ended it because there was an echo happening, but you can see how easy it is to set that up. I mean, we did that in a matter of minutes. And if I want to be available to take more calls, I can change that here. If I want to be offline, I can do that as an agent. Uh, you can also add in your own custom statuses. If you want to be on lunch, if you want to be on break, anything you want, you can customize it to suit your needs. All right, guys, that was my walkthrough. I hope it was useful. I would appreciate any comments, any feedback, any other tutorials you guys want to see. Please leave them in the comments below. Um, also, feel free to check out our Proficient blog on Amazon Connect because we do have a lot of different tutorials there. And uh, I, I hope you enjoyed this and hope you have a great rest of the day.